And now it's my privilege to introduce our guest speaker. Some people have noted a couple of times this semester about the close relationship that RMA bears to the Virginia Military Institute. Our commandant went to school there, our deputy commandant did, several of our prior graduates uh, are students there. Three members of this class, and I'm pretty sure a fourth pretty shortly will go to VMI. Uh, their president, uh, their superintendent, I'm sorry, their superintendent, General J. Benford P. came here in my first year and helped us draft our strategic plan. So it's not a stretch to say that our guest speaker, who is a graduate of that great place, uh, is a further step in the relationship that we share. You've got his bio in your program, and I won't go through it. I'll simply give it to you this way. Ladies and gentlemen, a native son of Virginia, a combatant commander, a military aide to the President of the United States, and my friend, General Darren McDee. Okay, here's some confessions right up front. I don't like speaking publicly. I like it less when I have to follow her. <laughs> the entire time I was preparing for this, I thought, how hard can this be? This is a high school graduation. I follow the valedictorian. They usually suck. <laughs> um, <laughs> That is not the case today. I watched your father. That be you. He didn't breathe the entire time you were speaking. <laughs> Exhale now. <laughs> I don't know where your mom is. Well done. You guys did something right. Um, I, I took several great things from that speech. Um, apology cupcakes. I, I need to incorporate that into my life. <laughs> uh, I will tell you, Noel, there was no reason to apologize to the chaplain. If you get Duke Blue wrong, it's okay. <laughs> Carolina Blue is the only one you want. Um, so there was no need for that apology cupcake. I should take that back from you. Um, uh, tangents. I don't, you said something about them. I didn't see any evidence of them. And time limits. I realized no one gave me one. So I will be respectful of the day and stick to what a four star typically gets, an hour, hour and a half. Uh, <laughs> your, your president talked about some of my background, a little bit of me being a combatant commander and a four star. Uh, what you will see evidence of is what happens to a four-star when he lo no longer has people. Um, I had a staff of speechwriters and et cetera that helped me with a lot of things, and now I rewrote this last night myself. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Uh, I am honored to be with you. Good morning, and thank you. Um, thank you from everyone, to, from Michelle, who is a great American, who put up with the arrangements for getting me here, um, I thank you for that kind and glorious introduction and the warm welcome that I'm sure I'm going to receive at some point. <laughs> but most importantly, I thank you for allowing me to join you on this wonderful and glorious Lord's Day. I am honored. I am humbled just to be here in Melton Memorial Gymnasium. I'm also thankful that air conditioning was put in a few years ago because uh, I understand it was a painful place to be before then. 127 commencements, and this one is yours. It's yours. <laughs> My good friend, uh, General Wesley, I'll, I'll say that out loud. Lisa, thank you very much. Your wonderful host, Evelyn, says hello and thank you for getting me out of the house. Um, to the board of trustees, parents, family, friends, faculty, cadets, alumni, and the men and women of the class of 2019, congratulations to you all. This day is now about you, and I'm staring you in the eye, and the power of RISE. 
the chaplain talked about the power of grit and rise, and he, he snuck in a little bit of Jeremiah 29 11, uh, one of my favorite passages. And then you got portions of love and compassion, and this school has given you tools that I don't think you'll appreciate for many, many decades yet, maybe, and if ever. But let me tell you, when I use the term cadet, I ought to banish it because that was yesterday. Yesterday, you were shining representatives of this magnificent institution. Today, I look at you and you're brimming with unlimited potential, unmatched promise. You're transforming in front of our very eyes into what I believe is our nation's next generation of leaders. Your diploma today is not just a tangible reward for completing RMA and some course of study. It's a signpost to a continuous journey. That journey is of inquiry, discovery, and what you've gotten deeply here, service. Some of you will impact our nation, and some of you will impact the world. Many challenges await you, but I and we have the greatest confidence in you. Now bear with me for a moment, because I have to acknowledge one of the first groups I want to pay tribute to sits behind you and around you, just as they always have. It's your parents, your supporting friends, and your families. They made this day possible for, with hours and hours and hours of love and encouragement to get you here. That love and encouragement you took for granted. That love and encouragement that will be there when you still take it for granted going forward. From my vantage point in the audience, it's very, very easy to pick them out. They're the ones with the proudest hearts and the biggest smiles. Glad to see their vision of this day finally realized. And equally glad to see their, their relationship with the registrar's office come to an end. Yes. <laughs> They're proud you're graduating. They're prouder yet that you got into college and really proud that many of you have scholarships. They have taken you from diapers to diplomas. They gave you the foundation. RMA provided you tools and training. Class of 2019, please rise and join me in applause for all of the people who made this possible, your families, your faculty, your staff, and your friends. Don't, don't take it too long, they know you're insincere, sit down. <laughs> Sincerity comes much later in life. <laughs> but just doing what I told you is a good thing for now. What a journey it's been for you. And congratulations again on getting through the tough trials, but you had great mentors. Through all of that, you bonded. You had mission trips and community service. Through all of that, you bonded. You had competition on the fields of strife, both athletic and drill. Win or lose, you continued to bond. As I cyber-stalked RMA and many of you in a good, not creepy way, <laughs> uh, several things struck me beyond your community service and beyond what you did on the athletic fields and the drill pad. This one should mean something to you. On my honor, as a student of Randolph-Macon Academy, I pledge not to lie, cheat, or steal, nor tolerate those who do. I will conduct myself in a manner that will bring credit to myself, my family, and to Randolph-Macon Academy. You have been filled with honesty, mutual trust and respect for others, good relationships, you understand the power of them. You know that you're expected to be great citizens. Through all of that, you bonded. So now I stand before you and go, what in the world can I say? I too researched a good speech from a guy like me and says I ought to give you a charge and I, and I ought to tell you a story. I'll do both. 
My charge is simply, beware, decide, be. Your story begins again today. If you look at my story, 150 years ago, I was you. <laughs> I was a shy kid, now I'm a shy adult. I had experienced most of my learning through books because I was an avid reader. I was also in an Air Force Junior ROTC detachment, a member of the drill team, a commander of the drill team, a commander of the Corps of Cadets. I had received a four-year Air Force ROTC scholarship. I had what I thought and didn't quite realize a good foundation of ethics and hard work. I was taught and lived by, as best I could, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You have all of that. You don't have to have it all figured out yet, but you've got to get to understand who you are now, and most importantly, who you're not. And it's okay to play around on the edges of that. So beware. Beware of the test. Most of you believe that your academic journey was where the tests were and where the tests will be. I'm here to tell you those are the easy ones. They're the ones that most of the time are scheduled. They're the ones that you get a letter grade for. They're the ones that you can recover from. It's life's tests that are the most damaging and challenging. And be careful and beware that they're coming. Someone will test your integrity. Someone will test your honor. Someone will test your core. Understand that test is coming and be ready for it. You've been given all the foundation and tools you need to deal with it. One of my first early tests was as a young lieutenant. I know it's hard to believe that young and, my, and me in the same sentence can come together, but yes, I was young once, never as young as you. In those days, I was told I was going to go fly with this more experienced crew and sit back, watch, listen, and learn. And I was not to do anything on this flight. It was a seven and a half hour sortie. But before the sortie, I went to base operations and I grabbed a chart and I drew the route of flight. Because when I sat there and watched with the other crew, I wanted to be able to ask intelligent questions. I went home that evening and I read my Dash 1, which is the, the manual about the airplane, which is about this thick. And Section 2 has all the normal procedures. So I read Section 2 front to back because I wanted to be able to ask intelligent questions. I went on to read Section 3, which is emergency procedures. And because I'd gone to pilot training in Arizona and I'm now flying an airplane in Maine, I thought Section 7 I might want to dust off because I had not read it much. It was cold weather procedures. Turned out to be a good idea. Five hours into the sortie, they turned and realized that this young kid had been sitting there all day and hadn't done anything. So they said, hey kid, and that's exactly what they said, get in the seat. I had enough time to get out of where I was, into the right seat, strap in, adjust, brief the crew, and the night before I had just read, the pilot flying approach must brief the crew on the following items prior to commencing the approach. I'd studied the approach the night before, and I was able to give the briefing just like that. I configured the airplane, turned, did an instrument landing system approach, touch and go, off we went. Was it the best landing ever in my life? No, wasn't bad. But they kicked me out of the seat right after that. <laughs> what happens when we got back to the squad? What's the first question that crew got asked? How'd the new guy do? And the answer was, huh. Ah. Was that a grade? Yes, it was. And it's better than, huh. Ah. I got a, huh. Ah. <laughs> that grade translates to the next time I fly and I have a reputation established. What happens if I don't do well? I might be given the benefit of the doubt. It turns out I did well the next flight, and the reputation starts to build. So beware of the test. I had classmates of mine that didn't pass that first test. You will keep getting tests, and that's why I say decide. Decide who you are. Not 
forever, but what's in your core? I'll tell you from my cyber stalking of you what should be in your core, honor, mutual trust, respect, serving others. Many people in the world, some of the people you admire, know what right looks like, but they can't live it. Decide today you're going to live it and then keep doing it. And the last part is B. If I were being graded by an English teacher, I'm sure this doesn't work. Beware of the test. Decide who you want to be and then just be. And the B is be it every day. Be it when times are tough. Be it when it's inconvenient. Every single day. Be who you are at your core and continue to get stronger. Right now, your dreams are important to you. But I will tell you, they're quite fragile. If you keep dreaming, and I implore you to keep doing that, and you keep working, your ideals will become even more established than you think they are right now. One of the secrets that I take with me is I learned from a 12-year-old, when I was a 12-year-old basketball player, I know it's hard for you to dream that up, but I was powerful as a 12-year-old. <laughs> and a chief master sergeant who was my coach at the time taught me about success, leadership, and life. And I learned that success is not about money. Success is not about fame. Success is not about power. It is about the content of your character. It's not about who you are. It's about who you're determined to be. It's not about where you come from, because I didn't come from a lot. But it's about where you're determined to go. I envy you. I see in you youth and vitality and the promise of decisions not yet made and the potential of roads not yet taken. I feel a special kinship to you. For once, I was you. And it makes me feel good right now to wind back the clock and relive some of those old days. Thanks for me, allowing me to be part of your day. And congratulations and enjoy the ride. Thanks.